Hey guys, new locomotive is in. This is the Athern Genesis GP7U Santa Fe number 1317. We'll do a little bit of run by right here and uh, then we'll jump into some details on it. So um, I did put a current keeper in it. Um, I actually got the Soundtracks current keeper, but it didn't fit. Luckily, I did have a TCS. Um, KA1 I believe it is and I uh, cut the cut the you know the plug off of the uh, the soundtracks current keeper put it on the TCS one and plugged it in and boy there's not a lot of room inside of there um, so it barely fit too but uh, I'll show you that in a second here we'll take a closer look at the the current keeper stuck in there we'll rev up the engine here let you hear the sounds and and then I'm going to show you the CV settings I did for the brand new locomotive. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go weather it. And uh, we'll take a look at it after it's all weathered. So this is what it looks like before weathering. And when you get to the end of the video, we'll see what it looks like after I weather it. So really enjoying this uh, locomotive. Um, very nice. Not quite my time period here, but you know, we can go back in time a little bit. Make believe like we got some foreign power running on the, uh, on this uh, side of the layout here. And I did not do any changes to uh, the sound. So this is all default sound. And the only thing I did change, and I'll show you when you see the CV settings, is I did change the echo on the horn. Um, I did put that up a little bit or change the setting on it. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at the uh, current keeper stuck in there and then uh, enjoy the weathering at the end. So you can see the uh, TCS, I think it's the KA1 uh, current keeper tucked into the locomotive there. And uh, yeah, it was fun getting it in there. And uh, I might still have to finagle it. I think I can get it pushed in a little bit more without, uh, you know, without messing up too much stuff. But uh, I might have to cut the little tab off of the top plate here because there's like little tabs. And one of them is right where that uh, current keeper is. And so it has the top of the, uh, you know, top of the locomotive lid there, whatever you want to call it. Uh, stands up just a little tiny bit, but I'm not sure. I'm going to try to get it uh, tucked in a little bit farther in there. Uh, I might have to Dremel out a little bit of plastic um, in the actual cab to uh, to let it kind of slide in a little bit farther, but uh, we'll see. Other than that, um, I've got it installed and working properly. All right, guys, so here's my uh, CVs. You can see right here, last column, this is the... Uh, um, this is a new locomotive. Let's just jump through all of the different CVs that I changed um, for the initial setup. So start voltage, I left at uh, zero. Uh, the acceleration rate and deceleration rate, I'm using 100. So that's a lot of momentum in there. Um, and that's because I use the train brake, or I guess the independent brake to actually stop it. So, you know, when you're running the train, you... Uh, throttle down it's still going to keep coasting for quite a bit with 100 until you hit the uh until you hit the brake there so and that's just the way i like it set up you can adjust yours as needed uh cb5 over here high voltage that's the maximum speed i set mine at 180 it seems to work out in the mid voltage cb6 um set it at 90 basically halfway so just a flat the uh, flat line from 0 to 180 uh, kick was set to zero. I don't even know what the setting is on there, so I just left it. Uh, independent brake. Again, I use 200 on both of my uh, um, Jeeps here. Um, brightness levels here for the registers I didn't really touch because it doesn't matter in this uh, locomotive since it, I don't think it uses it. Master brightness, though, DB64. I did crank that up to the maximum, 255. Um, and then the next one I did was 223. Now I set that to a setting of four. 288 over here was the initial setting that it came as a default. I don't know what that setting is. 
But uh, <clears throat> number four is the light or short echo for the horn. Um, I didn't change the horn or bell or anything else, prime mover. Um, they all looked good. And then master volume, I set it at 160. I just kind of played around with it, and that was my happy spot. You know, when I'm running it on my layout, it's loud enough, but not super, super loud. Uh, the next three right here, 31, 32, and 403, those are those weird ones to enable the brake squeal. So like when you hit F11, which is your brake, um, and it brakes using whatever setting you have up here in 117, uh, you have to enable it. It's disabled by default on the Athern Tsunami 2 um, board. And so <clears throat> you have to go into 31, just double check that it's 16. Uh, both of mine were defaulted at 16. Uh, 32 was defaulted to 1. And 403 is the oddball one. That's the one that enables the brake squeal. Um, you set it to zero. It was set to 12. I have no idea what the 12 setting is, but uh, zero is dis or, or enable basically um, the brake squeal, right? And then uh, all important, if you're going to be putting in a current keeper or keep alive or something like that, disable your DC um, dual mode sort of thing on the on the uh, on the decoder because it causes some issues. Um, so I just disable it, um, and DB29 is a little weird one. There's like several settings in there. If you Google DCC CV29 calculator, you'll get a calculator online. You can select all of the different options out of the several ones that you have, and it gives you the actual setting, which in my case was 34. I think the only two things for 34 that um, are selected in the like list of several different options are that it's a, a 28 slash uh, 128 speed step and that, um, what was the other one? Oh, and, that, and that, uh, I forgot what the heck the other one was. But anyway, there was another one that it was uh, selected on there and, oh, the, to actually disable the, the DCC. It's either enabled or disabled. And then it gives you a number here, so 34, that's what I set. And that uh, clears up some of the weird issues that you can run across if you don't do that. All right, so now let's go over and uh, do the weathering. All right, guys, so got it all weathered up. Uh, I put a coat of uh, flat, you know, clear coat over the top of it to start out with. Um, then got some grimy brown and... Uh, olive drab sort of paint mixture got it in the airbrush started spraying that up mainly on the bottom side around the trucks a little bit on top too also a little bit of white uh very thin down just to uh sort of um dull down the paint a little bit more a little bit of powder work and just a little bit of rust work you can see there's some rust around these little boxes here i don't know if that's like the battery boxes or something like that but all the prototypical pictures that i've seen that's where the rust is so we'll spin it around here, give you a good look. Managed to keep uh, the windows fairly clean. Um, a lot of, lot of uh, work on the, uh, I guess it's not really a plow, but the front right there. Those little, both uh, front and back tend to get pretty dirty from the prototype pictures that I've seen. Focus that in for you. Yeah, I think it came out pretty good. Not too grimy, but grimy enough. Um, a little bit of grime here at the door. A little rust work there again. I might go back and touch it up a little bit more, but uh, for the first pass, I think it's not too bad. So guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to enjoy running this thing in the next operating session for you. for you, And, uh, yeah, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and hit the bell button to get notified. You know the drill already. All right, till next time, take care. Bye.